Islanders have maintained their existence despite isolation and the constant threat of volcanic eruptions. We have met the keepers of the forest that lies between civilization and wilderness. We are heading towards the land of heavenly kings. This place has no border between life and death. We are visiting an immortal land where the world's most elaborate funerals are held. Indonesia is known as the land of a thousand stories. It's composed of nearly 18,000 islands and consists of over 700 ethnic groups, each with its own distinct traditions. What will we learn today? Today's story begins in the small village of Bantang in southern Sulawesi. In Indonesia, horse-pulled carts can still be seen on the roads alongside cars. Interestingly, in Bantang, horses are used to plow rice paddies. It is a different landscape from other areas where water buffaloes usually plow. Horses are cheaper. Besides, I hear in China and Europe, they use horses like they do here because they are stronger than cows. There is a famous waterfall at the end of this road that runs along the foot of the mountain. As I continue to follow the sounds, I begin to see glimpses of falling water. Water is pounding down harder from the sudden downpour of rain. But there's a brave man who simply strolls through the rushing waters. It must be very slippery, yet he walks with ease. He says that he'll fish in these waters. This area is known for its abundance of freshwater eels. He chooses a place where the water is slower and positions his fishing rod. It's nothing but a weak branch, but he sets it in a crevice and leaves. We agree to come back tomorrow morning and head back. The young villagers live in a small village at the foot of the mountain. Curious at seeing a foreigner, in no time all the village children have gathered. We go to the young fisherman's house. The first thing I see in the yard is a birdcage. There are a lot of chicks in it, 
they don't appear to be chicken chicks. One escapes suddenly, taking the people by surprise, but thankfully it is quickly captured and placed back in its cage. Hello, Mr. Dad. <laughs> They raise the birds for their eggs. Mm. It's a lucrative business for them. They appear to have three to four horses for farming. <laughs> Horses are useful animals. <laughs> Besides farming, the horses deliver goods and are used for travel. Each horse has three roles. There's no better animal for this small village. He cultivated the cornfield in the mountain behind his home by himself. He has created something out of nothing. He has planted root vegetables along the edges of the cornfield. Cassava is the staple food of the villagers. This village doesn't need to worry about food since it farms corn and cassava in addition to rice. That was a close call. Here, there's plenty of water to farm, and the landscape is beautiful. They have everything they need. The young men of the village are going to see if their fishing rods caught anything. Amazingly, there are eels hanging from their fishing rods. <laughs> I wonder if they are going to cook the eels now. This eel was caught to use as bait for catfish. As in Korea, catfish are considered a rare health food here. They are very powerful fish. They don't have to wait long before their fishing rods begin to move. A very large one has taken the bait, but it puts up a strong fight. They don't reel it in quickly, but they know how to lure it in like pros as they pull and tug at the line. They gradually coax the exhausted catfish out of the water. The fish loses the tense struggle. This time, a catfish takes the bait of another fishing rod. It appears as if it were going to put up a fight. However, there's a faster way to bring it in. Mother! 
this catfish still has some energy in him. Looking at it like this, I can see why it is called a catfish. It seems like I'll be able to recover all the energy I spent traveling. On the menu are grilled catfish and catfish stew. It's a special meal for the family too. <laughs> it's truly a special treat for them and everyone wants to get more of it. Although it was meant for the adults, the children have quickly taken their share. <laughs> he works hard and gets back as much in return. Just like he says, he's got plenty. Now I'm back on the road, leaving this beautiful village behind. Next, we're off to Tana to Raja, the place famous for its unique funeral traditions. The first thing to greet me here is a water buffalo. In Tana to Raja, water buffalo are raised not for farming, but for funerals. <laughs> This area is Sulawesi's main producer of rice. They plant and harvest rice twice a year here. Without any help from machines, they thresh rice using their bare hands. <laughs> There's more rice flying out than going into the barrel. <laughs> Another great harvest was reaped, thanks to the temperate weather in the highlands. At the end of a harvest, endless singing can be heard in the village. The funeral seems to have started already. They've begun to sing and dance for the deceased. At first glance, it looks more like a festival than a funeral. A coffin is placed in the center. In one area, women are beating pestles in rhythm. They say it is music to welcome the guests. The bereaved family and their relatives parade while making sounds and dancing. This area has a caste system like India. So the richer and more powerful the individual, the bigger the funeral. This is the family of a rich landowner. 
There is a large number of mourners because it's the funeral of the grandmother, the oldest member of the family. Many people have been called to help with this funeral, including the musicians. The largest number of people is in the kitchen. The kitchen is the busiest area at a funeral. Since Taraja is famous for its coffee, it is served more than alcohol here. I wonder how it'll taste with so much sugar mixed in with the coffee. And is it okay for a funeral to be this fun? Very good. <laughs> Artinya, walaupun kita sedih, tetapi kita juga senang menerima tamu yang datang di sini. Karena kita punya tamu ini yang datang. Jadi, tetap senang juga menghadapi ya, penghargaan orang meninggal. Death brings sadness everywhere in the world. But here, they hide their pain and send off their dead cheerfully. Following the usher's directions, I am led to a unique area upstairs. Not only is the year-long preservation surprising, but so is the funeral cost. In Indonesia, the middle class makes an average of $500 a month, but this funeral costs nearly $60,000. That's a lifetime of savings. Most of the money is spent on water buffalo. White spotted buffaloes with large horns cost a whopping $30,000 to $40,000. They believe that the more water buffalo they slaughter, the more luck they and their descendants will receive. The traditional houses here are just as unique as the funeral practices. They are called tungkonan, and they look like ships from below. They look similar to the houses of the Batak in Sumatra which are built to resemble a water buffalo horn. There is a high possibility that they are from the same racial subgroup. It's also interesting that every house is decorated with water buffalo horns. We visit the house with the most horns. Compared to its outside, the interior is rather simple. But I find something alarming in a small room in the corner of the house. It is the body of the owner's sister, who died two months ago. Sesudah empat puluh hari, 
setelah sesudah upacara. 40 hari di, diupacarakan baru 40 hari sesudahnya itu ya, masuk baru naik ke atas The body doesn't give off a bad odor because it has been chemically treated. They've carefully placed her possessions in the coffin. And just as if she were still living, they serve her two meals a day. ini, ini pangan. Ini pangan semua orang datang, ada pangan dikasih masuk, ada uang. Ada uang di dalam ini. Hmm. Nah itu pangan. Ada yang 40 juta satu ekor, ada yang 35 satu ekor. Jadi sudah ada berapa, tapi masih banyak yang mau dibeli. Abang mau beli berapa total? Eh, di atas 10. They'll start the funeral once they've gathered all the money they need. The number of water buffalo horns is a sign of the family's wealth and power. But why a water buffalo? Itu dipakai itu sebagai kendaraan. Sebagai kendaraan ke surga. Transportasi. Transportasi. Tidak bisa kalauan. Makanya harus kita sumbangkan kepada orang tua kita sebagai jasa-jasanya, balas jasa lah. Surprisingly, 60 to 70 percent of the people here are Christians. Despite their religious beliefs, they follow their traditional ancestor worship rituals. Traditional tombs are located on cliffs. The skulls along the climb up are slightly frightening. Since it's a family site, the bones are all gathered in one place. They died a long time ago, since 100 years ago. This uh, graves, like this one, all of them, they are called Erong, big wooden grave, the, one of the oldest grave in Toraja. How do they get the coffins up so high? There are some that are high above at the top of the cliff. It's because they believe the higher the graves are, the closer they are to heaven. They live in boat-shaped houses and they rest in boat-shaped coffins when they die with sculptures of water buffaloes and pigs. These sculptures are the deceased companions to heaven. They also bury their dead in caves. This practice is mostly used by the poor who can't afford other burial methods. In some ways, if you're poor in Taraja, you are poor in death as well. In front of the unique tombs are lifelike dolls. They are wooden effigies called Tao Tao. We meet a Tao Tao carver. It's amazing how well he carves. It's hard to believe it is made of wood. 
Not only do they recreate the deceased's features, they also recreate their clothing and even their walking sticks. It is really the deceased doppelganger. Not only the face, but the deceased's entire body is recreated. How does he do this? Kalau kita bikin tahu-tahu diukur, dia punya roman toh, dia punya muka itu diukur. Gini toh, baru diukur tingginya, diukur lebarnya dia punya muka, baru dibagi, artinya di skala. He's been making Tao Tao dolls for 30 years. He recreates the dead with only a photo, hammer, and chisel. Everyone has different features, but he makes them all so easily. It's amazing to see him work. We decide to test his skills and ask him to create a doll of a member from our production team. After assessing his features, he goes to work on the details of his subject's face. Thirty minutes later, he's done. Ya, ini sudah selesai patungnya. Kamu harus bayar satu ekor kerbau. Iya. Tahu tahu inyongi bulsuan mari kagok jongdo dene. Dengan Hongkong dono ribu 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 jongdo. Tapi khususnya ini kan cuma cago ni kan cuma tage junta ugu ramida. Iya iya. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Days into the funeral, they've begun the funeral march. The funeral beers are built to look exactly like the Tungunan, their traditional homes. Everyone participates in this ceremony. They circle the entire village, visiting places where the deceased frequently went. It's very different from traditional Korean funerals, where tears overflow. Oh, 
죽었다고 사람이 죽었다고 이제 이별하는 게 아니라 다시 하나의 또 다른 그런 만남으로 생각하는 것 같습니다. For an hour, they've circled the entire village together and have arrived back where they started. After the funeral procession, the real funeral begins. For a week until they bury the coffin, every day is a festival. What does death mean to the Taraja? It doesn't mean the end of life or a final farewell like it does to most of us. For them, life continues after death and death actually brings a family together. Tana Taranja is perhaps a place where there are no farewells in death. Saya sebagai orang Toraja harus mempertahankan kesenian baik seni musik maupun seni tarian karena memang dari nenek moyang kami harus dilestarikan